Hey there, deep divers. You want to know how AI is shaking things up in HR, especially in the Gulf Cooperation Council? Well, get this. We're diving into a recent SHRM m and report. And let me tell you, it's a goldmine of insights. It's fascinating, really. Mm -hmm. AI is transforming HR everywhere you look, but the GCC is like its own little Petri dish. Really? Yeah, you've got this fusion of rapid tech adoption and unique cultural and economic forces all pushing and pulling on how AI is being used in the workplace. Huh, interesting. Yeah. It's not just some AI buzzword bingo either. Right. This report gets into the weeds of what GCC HR leaders are prioritizing, the challenges they're facing, and how they're using AI to get real tangible results. And that's what makes this report so valuable. Oh. For you, it's grounded in the real-life experiences of companies in the GCC. Okay, so let's unpack this thing. The report starts by shining a light on the top HR priorities in the region mm -hmm. and the number one concern. What's that? Talent. Talent. Specifically, attracting and holding on to top-tier talent in a super competitive job market. Which makes perfect sense when you think about the GCC's economic landscape. Right. It's a battle for the best and brightest. Exactly. But here's where it gets really interesting. Okay. Right up there with talent acquisition is employee well-being. Interesting. We're talking about mental health, positive workplace cultures, the whole nine yards. This shows how HR's role is changing on a global scale. Yeah. It's not just about admin work and payroll anymore. Right. Companies are waking up to the fact that happy and healthy employees equal a more productive and innovative workforce. And in a competitive market like the GCC, could that focus on well-being be what gives companies an edge in attracting those top performers? It's something to think about, right? Absolutely. But it creates <laughs> this fascinating paradox. What's that? You've got this drive for cutting-edge tech, like AI on one hand, mm. and on the other, you need to ensure that technology isn't implemented at the expense of employee well-being. It's a tightrope walk for sure. It is. And here's where the plot thickens. Okay. The report reveals a major challenge for HR departments. Yeah. Budget constraints. Uh. It seems even with all the hype surrounding AI, there are still real-world financial limitations to navigate. This is where HR leaders need to get strategic. Yeah. It's about identifying which AI solutions will provide the biggest bang for their buck and then building a solid business case to justify those investments. So it's not just about adopting the shiniest new AI tool. Right. It's about choosing the tool that addresses specific needs, fits the budget, and ultimately delivers a return on that investment. It's like trying to bake a cake with one hand tied behind your back, right? Yeah. You've got all these am amazing ingredients, AI tools, but limited resources to work with. Exactly. And that brings us to the million-dollar question. Okay. How are companies actually using AI in their HR processes, especially with those budget constraints. Well, the report dives into some specific examples, and this is where it gets really interesting for you. It turns out that 45% of HR professionals in the GCC are already reporting big wins using AI in, you guessed it, recruitment and staffing. That's not surprising at all. Really? AI is a rock star. When it comes to those high-volume tasks, like sifting through resumes, identifying promising candidates, even scheduling interviews. It's like having a tireless assistant who can work around the clock without needing a coffee break. Haha, <laughs> exactly. And it's not just about recruitment. The report also found that 35% of HR pros are seeing major improvements in workforce planning thanks to AI, particularly in sectors like IT and manufacturing. They're using it to anticipate future skills gaps, analyze workforce trends, and stay ahead of the curve. And this gets to the heart of AI's true potential in HR. It's not about replacing human expertise. It's about augmenting it. Oh. AI can process mountains of data and identify patterns that would take humans forever to uncover. Wow. This frees up HR professionals to focus on the strategic, human-centric aspects of their roles, the stuff AI just can't replicate. It's like giving HR superpowers, and the report goes beyond just the numbers. It gives you a sneak peek into the specific AI tools that are getting GCC companies excited. We're talking applicant tracking systems, AI-powered learning platforms, even robots for onboarding. Let's not forget AI's potential impact on employee relations. Oh, right. Imagine having data-driven insights to help navigate tricky interpersonal dynamics. There is that quote from an HR manager who wanted AI to help analyze employee relations situations. 
Talk about taking data-driven decisions to a whole new level. It's a shift from relying on gut feelings to making informed decisions based on concrete evidence. Okay, so AI sounds like a dream come true for HR, right? Right. Well, hold on to your hats because it's not all sunshine and roses. The report doesn't shy away from the very real obstacles companies face when it comes to AI adoption. And some of these obstacles are pretty significant, especially given the unique context of the GCC. One of the biggest concerns, and this is a big one for you to consider, is data privacy and security. We're talking about sensitive employee information here. In sectors like healthcare, with all the regulations, it gets even more complex. Absolutely. The report really stresses the importance of companies establishing strong ethical frameworks and governance structures around AI. You can't just deploy this technology without considering the potential risks and unintended consequences. Ethics and AI, that's a whole other deep dive waiting to happen. But on a more practical level, another obstacle highlighted in the report is the cost. Implementing these cutting-edge AI solutions doesn't come cheap. It's a classic case of you get what you pay for. Right. The more sophisticated the AI, the higher the investment. Companies need to be prepared for that. Remember those budget constraints we talked about earlier? It's like the universe is reminding us that there's no such thing as a free lunch, or in this case, a free AI chatbot. Another challenge the report points out is the difficulty of integrating AI with existing HR systems. Which can be a real headache, especially for companies with outdated technology. It's like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. The report actually found that around 35% of companies, especially in manufacturing and heavy industries, are wrestling with this exact problem. Their legacy systems just aren't equipped to handle the demands of AI. It's a common dilemma in the age of digital transformation. Yeah. Companies need to decide whether to scrap their entire HR infrastructure and start fresh or find ways to shoehorn AI into their existing systems. Tough choices. But here's the kicker. Even with all these challenges, the report ends on a surprisingly optimistic note. Are you ready for this? Give me with it. They're saying AI won't replace HR. It will empower HR to be even more strategic and impactful. Yeah. Like HR gets to level up. I love that analogy. It's not about humans versus machines. It's about humans and machines working together to create a better future of work. But this collaboration requires a whole new set of skills for HR professionals. You bet. The report talks about how digital literacy is no longer optional. It's a must have. You got to speak the language of AI to thrive in this new world. And it's not just about technical skills. Right. The report also emphasizes the importance of creativity, critical thinking, and even emotional intelligence. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Emotional intelligence. In an AI-powered workplace, that seems counterintuitive. It's more important than ever. Really? As AI takes over routine tasks, the human touch becomes even more valuable. Okay. HR professionals will be the ones building relationships, fostering collaboration, and creating workplaces where people feel valued and connected, even in highly automated environments. So it's like AI is the co-pilot, providing guidance and support, but HR is still the pilot steering the ship and making the big decisions. Precisely. And that requires a shift in mindset, a willingness to embrace AI as a powerful tool that can be used for good in the HR field. A tool that can actually help create a more human-centered workplace, even in the age of machines. Now that's something to think about. But I'm curious to hear your thoughts, what's resonating with you so far. This deep dive is just a glimpse into the evolving landscape of AI and HR in the GCC, but hopefully it's giving you plenty to consider. We've covered a lot of ground, haven't we? We have. From talent shortages to robots handling onboarding, it's been quite a ride. But this report wasn't just about painting a rosy picture of AI's impact on HR. You're right. Hmm. One of the most thought-provoking takeaways from the report is the concept of technology fatigue. Oh, yeah. Have you ever felt that, listener? Totally. That sense of being bombarded with new apps and platforms faster than you can keep up? Oh, absolutely. It's like the digital world is stuck on fast forward and we're all just trying to keep up. <sighs> I think it's something a lot of people can relate to, especially in the fast-paced world of HR. And the report highlights how this technology fatigue is a real concern for HR departments in the GCC. Really? They're being asked to adapt quickly, often without the necessary resources or support. Wow. It can be overwhelming. It's like they're being asked to build the plane while they're flying it. Exactly. And that constant pressure to adapt can lead to burnout, resistance to new tools, even if those tools could ultimately make their jobs easier. Exactly. And that's where strong leadership comes in. Okay. Companies need to invest in training their HR teams, providing clear guidance, 
and fostering a culture that encourages experimentation and continuous learning, even if it means making a few mistakes along the way. It's about creating a safe space for HR professionals to explore these new technologies, right? Because at the end of the day, AI isn't a magic solution. Right. It's a powerful tool, but it needs to be used effectively by skilled and supported individuals. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. And that brings us to the heart of what this report is really all about. The future of HR in the GCC isn't about being replaced by robots. It's about becoming superpowered humans. Humans who can harness the power of AI to create a more strategic, efficient, and ultimately human-centered workplace. Hmm. It's about finding that balance, that synergy between human ingenuity and artificial intelligence. Precisely. And that's something I hope you'll walk away with today, listener. Okay. The key takeaway here is that as AI continues to evolve, it will undoubtedly transform the HR landscape in the GCC and beyond. But ultimately, it's up to us, the humans, to shame how that transformation unfolds. And on that note, deep divers, we've reached the surface of this exploration into the world of AI and HR in the GCC. It has been a journey. We've plumbed the depths of a fascinating report, uncovered some key insights, and hopefully giving you a fresh perspective on this rapidly evolving landscape. It's been a pleasure diving deep with you both. The pleasure was all ours. And to our listeners, until next time, keep asking questions, keep exploring, and keep diving deep into the ever-changing world of work.